Hey, welcome to the Chennis Berry Show, brought to you by New Creation Construction. Uh, new face in the, in the seat over here, Coach. You look good over there, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't you guys have a, a saying, next man up? Hey man, adapt and overcome, next well, man up. We want to give a shout out to our main man, Curtis Wilson. Uh, he's recovering from a uh, little procedure today, and uh, we certainly uh, wish him the best, and uh, we'll see him again next week. Absolutely. All right. Well, Coach, just want to say another road game and another tough, tough loss. 34-28 uh, to Kentucky State up in Indianapolis, Indiana in the Circle City Classic. Mm -hmm. Just your thoughts after the game. It was a tough loss. Well, another tough one, like you say, Dennis, man. Um, you know, went up to Indianapolis, had a great game plan, great mindset going into the week. Had actually a really good week of practice. And, and uh, we came up short again, man. That's two weeks in a row, one game by seven, uh, this game by six. But, you know, our kids just kept fighting. They're a resilient group, you know, through it all. You know, we hadn't got the results we wanted, which is obviously to be 1-0. Uh, but those kids are fighting. They got the, We have to learn how to win those tight, those close games, man. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of their efforts. We got some things we need to clean up, absolutely. But uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, we got a good football team. We still feel real good. We still believe. But we came up short against a good Kentucky State football team. Just your thoughts on the experience, overall experience playing that opportunity to play in Lucas Oil Stadium. Certainly was a great venue. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful venue. Uh, you're talking about. Uh, state-of-the-art facility, you know, in terms of the field, in terms of the stadium, in terms of the locker room. Just a great experience for our young men. They really enjoyed the experience. Had a great crowd, too. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed with the crowd. People from that metropolitan area was able to come out and watch our guys play and be able to put Benedict College on display. You know, I, like I said, overall, we didn't get the results we wanted, which was a win, but it was a great overall experience for our young men uh, to get a chance to go up to the Midwest and play in a, an exciting Circle City class. It certainly was exciting. We'll get to some of the highlights later, but again, second week in a row, a chance to win at the end. Yeah, it's come down to the two games in a row, uh, the last play of the game. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we just got to learn how to win those close games. You know, we're putting ourselves in position to win those games, but we have to find a way to finish. And that's where our uh, philosophy will be this week. We have to find a way to finish and win. All right, we'll take a few uh, look at some of the highlights from this game. Mm -hmm. Benedict gets the ball first. We don't hold it very long. We throw an interception. Oh, man. We started it off not the way we wanted it. We wanted to preach a fast start. And usually when we start off fast, we have a really, really good outcome. And we started off slow. Uh, we had three plays. Uh, we were pit back, you know, after a penalty on special teams, the first play of the game. So we had to start with our backs against the wall. And on third down, our quarterback, Eric Phoenix, made a really poor decision, which he should have just threw the ball away, and he didn't do that. So it resulted in an interception that uh, put their offense in scoring position early to start the game. So we get the ball back, Coach. Yep. We go on a nice 17-play, 83-yard drive. Nice moving the ball down the field. I tell you what, our guys really, really did a great job on that drive. To get a 17-play drive, I mean, you got to be rocking and rolling. So we were moving the ball, you know, getting that thing all the way down the field like we want to do, and we were able to uh, finish that drive with a nice touchdown run by our quarterback. Eric, Eric Phoenix. Phoenix goes on a three-yard run. Now we, we tie the game, 7-7. Seven, 7-7, seven. Seven, seven, baby. New ball game. Let's absolutely, go. Absolutely, absolutely. Thoroughbreds get a nice kickoff return, and then they follow that up with another long run. That puts them in good position. Mm -hmm. So uh, they go, uh, they end up scoring on a one yard run, take a 14 7 lead, still in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Benedict, we get to go on another drive, 75 yards, seven plays. We're moving the ball well, coach, offensively. Oh, yeah, we're doing some good things, man. You know, our guys are believing in what we're doing. Uh, we were able to move the ball. You know, that's, that's the whole deal. In the first half, we were taking the ball up and down the field. Key play, 36-yard pass from Eric Phoenix to Taven Grice. Then Omarion Coleman finishes the drive with a nine-yard touchdown run. Game tied again, 14-14 in the second quarter. Man, OC, man. We call him OC. His name is Omarion Coleman. What a great running back, man. He's got a chance to have a bright future. He's just a freshman. And, uh, you know, he was able to finish that drive with a nice touchdown run. But again, guys, man, we're doing a great job. Our offensive line, they were really getting after it. You know, you can't run the ball and you can't move the ball offensively if you don't do a good job up front. So I thought our guys did a really good job of opening up some holes, giving the quarterback time to put the ball in the receiver's hands, and we was able to make some big plays and, and tie that game up at 14. 
But then Kentucky State has a field goal. If we come back, we take the lead for the first time. 21-17, Jaden McLeod scores on a two-yard run. Tavion Grice, Tavian Grice had a couple of nice catches on the drive, and Omarion Coleman had a nice big 15-yard run on that drive. Again, he, he was showing some things against Kentucky State. I tell you what, both of those guys did an awesome job. Tavian Grice, he, he was superb for us on this past Saturday. And Omarion Coleman really, really showed us some signs that he's got a chance to be a special running back. And he was able to get some big explosive runs for us. But, you know, we were able to do some good things on that drive as well. Great, great. We forced Kentucky, Kentucky State into their first punt of the game. Mm -hmm. and it was a scary moment. You must have been a little nervous over there on the sideline, a little scramble at the end. Um, the officials have to get together and then they make the right call. Yeah, Give the ball back to Benedict. Officials got it right. They got it right, you know, because they were, they were kind of scrambling, trying to figure out what to do, but uh, they ended up getting it right and gave us the possession of the football. And then on second down, uh, Eric Phoenix throws a little screen pass over to, to uh, Jaden Thomas, and he shows off some credible speed, races 70 yards for a touchdown. We pride ourselves on explosive players and uh, explosive plays made by explosive players. And uh, we did an awesome job of uh, getting the ball into our playmaker's hands. And uh, he did an incredible job, Jaden Thomas, of finishing an explosive play with a touchdown. Great, great. Tigers go up 28-17 late in the second quarter, and that's the score we take into the locker room at halftime. We're up. We're up. Guys are feeling good. We're up. But again, we, when we go into halftime, we always uh, have the mindset we're 0-0 zero, zero, regardless of what the score. We're going to come out in the second half with a fresh new start. So what were some of the discussions at halftime? You know, the biggest thing is just tell the kids, just keep believing, all right? Yes, we're up on the scoreboard, quote unquote, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's another half. It's 30 more minutes. Let's get locked in. Let's go and finish the game and try to come away from there with a win. So, so that's the first half, 28-17. Hey, right, Coach, we're going to take this time now, spotlight one of our assistant coaches. You have a great staff, and uh, we're going to take this time to look at Coach Tremaine Henry, our defensive line coach, as part of the Lexington Medical Center Assistant Coach Spotlight. Go Tigers. Well, my name is Tremaine Henry. I'm originally from Statesville, North Carolina. Uh, play college ball at Morris Hill College. Uh, graduated in the uh, fall of 1993. Uh, actually was a police officer, um, did a law enforcement background. And in 1995, I started, I started coaching um, high school ball in my hometown. And that's where I caught the bug and I enjoyed helping uh, young men be successful. And around 1999 or so, um, I have been sending a couple kids who got uh, opportunities to go play college ball, and a college coach asked me, "Say, man, you need to be a D-line coach, so, you know, on, on the college level." And he helped me with my first job, and he is now the D-line coach for the Tennessee Titans. So he was an A and T at the time, and uh, I got my first coaching job at Elizabeth City in 2001, and I've been coaching ever since. What I love about coaching here at Benedict College is, is, is it was a new opportunity for me. Uh, I've known Coach Berry for uh, over 20 plus years. Um, we first met back working the camp circuit, um, and it, it, it was a new opportunity for me. Uh, it was a challenge. Benedict has a history. Um, um, they had good football players, and I knew that knowing Coach Berry, um, his leadership skills, his coaching ability, um, I mean, he's amazing. And I just want an opportunity to be have known someone for so long, and we talked on the phone, but this was an opportunity for me to come work for him and work with him, and I jumped at the opportunity. Well, defensively, uh, you know, we've got to continue to get better. Um, you know, we can't rest on what we did week to week. We've we got to continue to get better. Coach Baird preaches get 1% better every day, and that's what we got to con continue to do as a staff and as a defensive unit, to play fast, play hard for four quarters. Uh, the things that I stress mostly important for me is fundamentals, technique. I'm real big on technique. I've been several places coaching D-line. I've been, I've been able to be successful, have All-American, All-Conference football players, and it's all been technique. You know, I tell them, your God-given talent can only take you so far, but if you got technique with that, you are unstoppable. So it's, it's just just hitting home on those, on, on those things every day, just basic fundamentals. Hat, hands, and feet. 
I mean, to have this opportunity to be here, uh, to 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 start a new chapter in in, in Benedict College football, um, I mean, it's, it's it's a blessing. I'm honored to do it. Um, it's been a lot of hard work, but you know, we will see the fruits of our labor. Uh, the most thing that people think is supposed to be instant success, uh, you don't want to happen too fast because that creates another problem. So we're on the right track, um, but we just got to keep. We got to stay the course and just keep coaching our kids the way we want them to play. And then this program is going to be fine. Something that I learned new about myself coaching at Benedict, I've had more patience in it than I, than I thought I had. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a very patient person, but I've had more. I've, I've learned that I have more patience. Um, I learned that, uh, you know, as long as I've been coaching, you always learn something new. Uh, uh, my father, my grandfather always told me, if you go through a whole day and you ain't learned anything, you just wasted a day. So, and that goes back to getting that 1% better. You know, you want to get better every day. So, you know, it is, it's definitely has been a learning experience, uh, uh, dealing with kids who, um, who may not have the football knowledge and you try to get them to that point to where they can understand, that's the joyous part of it. When you, you put in all your hard work and you see your kids actually do what you, teach them to do and you can look at it and show it to them on film like hey this is it right here you know you're playing a good game and, and you know just and and then you know you're instilling these young men hard work hard work ethic not only just on the field but off the field as well so because it, it's going to carry them all through life uh, a, a boss man someday a supervisor so you know you want to put those things inside of them that will help them prepare them for life after football i'm coach henry go tigers In our state, team rivalries run deep. Sometimes our fans might not always agree. But South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. It's time to come together off the field. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Vaccines are safe and effective. And they're our best shot at victory. Don't wait until it's too late. Learn how to protect yourself and your family. At scdhec.gov slash vaxfacts. Protect your family, your friends, your neighbors, the people who care for you. Save a life. Wear a mask. And we're back to the Tennis Berry Coaches Show, brought to you by New Creation Construction, as always. They do a tremendous job for us. Appreciate uh, their support and all, this, all the support from all of our sponsors, absolutely, certainly. Absolutely. But, Coach, so second half, uh, they open, Kentucky State opens the second half. They go on a drive, uh, cuts the lead to 28-24. Start, starting to get a little tight now. <laughs> absolutely. No question about it. So then... We get the ball back. Our first offensive series, quarterback Eric Phoenix rolls out, gets sacked, and in the process, has to limp off the field, and he's out for the rest of the game. That was a tough blow. Absolutely. He wasn't able to come back after that play, uh, but that gave him the next man up opportunity. And yeah. uh, Nate Harden was able to come in and finish the rest of the game. But, you know, our philosophy in this program is regardless of what, next man up, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Certainly, and as, as we're finding out today. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. So then uh, late in the third quarter, uh, Harden, he passes to Taven Grice. Man, he had a heck of a game. Seven catches, 147 yards. He's our Prisma Health player of the game. So he passes, uh, Taven Grice gets a 28-yard pass. That sets up first and goal at the five-yard line. Unfortunately, Harden throws an interception in the end zone. That was a tough, tough turnover. I tell you what, that, that, that drive right there was tough. You know, we were moving the ball, taking the ball all the way down the field. At this point, we're up 28 to 24. We're driving the ball. We actually scored a touchdown this play prior to the interception. Mm -hmm. We threw a touchdown to Tavian Grice. He scored, but we had a block in the back by another one of our receivers, Steve Campbell. So they were able to 
move us back so they alleviated the score and then the very next play we had a great play call and uh, uh, we ended up throwing an interception um, we tried to get the ball to, to Sean Presley in the left corner and uh, they were able to get an interception and that touchdown would have put us up by 11 points but certainly. unfortunately we didn't get it done right there. Certainly yeah so third, uh, third breads take over the ball they march 80 yards on just 10 plays Jonathan Jerry their quarterback person you might be a little more familiar with he goes 51 yards on a first set up a first and goal they score on the next play retake the lead 31 28 yeah at this point we were having a hard time just really stopping the run you know uh, we went into the game we thought we had a great plan in terms of stopping their option attack you know we knew they were a triple option team and and they pretty much had it their way in the running game I mean we we had a hard time of cutting the water off and uh, you know it continued the whole entire game but you know, kudos again to their staff. They had a great plan, uh, but we got to do a better job of fitting the run. Yeah, it's two weeks in a row now. Uh, certainly, Kentucky State 450 yards rushing total in the game. That was that's a lot of yards. Yeah, that's a lot of yards. That's uh, a whole lot of yards. But we're going to get it fixed. I believe in our defensive staff. I believe in our defensive personnel. Uh, they're excited about the next challenge. And you know, anytime you want to be a, build a good football team, you got to be able to run the football and you got to be able to stop the run. So. We, put, we punt on our next series. Kentucky State gets close, uh, but the defense steps up, holds th Kentucky State to a 34-yard field goal. That makes it 34-28, just under three minutes left in the game. So we get the ball back with time on the clock. Hey, that's our philosophy around here, man. As long as there's time on the clock, we got a chance to win the football game. And right now we're down six. We gather the guys to the side. We talk about, we practice these situations and scenarios each and every week. Every Thursday we practice two-minute drill. We give them different situations. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down, and we have to find a way to finish games. And we were able to be in a two-minute situation again. And again, we were able to take the ball down the field, mm -hmm. all the way down the field, all the way down the field with a chance to win the football game at the end. Absolutely. Get to the 27-yard line. Time's running out. Three seconds left. Nate Harden throws a Hail Mary pass to big target. Chris Williams in the corner of the end zone. Ball is actually... In his fingertips, he just couldn't come down with it. I tell you what, when we talk about the game being a game of inches all the time, the ball literally was at Chris Williams' fingertips, and he just wasn't able to corral it and bring it in. And but we were that close, still, to still spider, in spite of winning, winning that football like game. Say, and like I say, kudos out to my my players. They keep fighting to the echo of the, the, echo of the that whistle. To that clock hit zero. They're gonna fight. They're a resilient group. We're gonna, we're gonna find a way to win those close games. We just hadn't able to uh, get that done right now. But our our young men are gonna find a way to win those close games. That's right, Coach. So it's time now for the Prisma Health Player Spotlight. This week we're gonna feature linebacker, senior linebacker Tim Allen. Tim Allen. He's a great linebacker. He's a great leader. I'll tell you what, he's also Mr. Senior. You know, he does a great job as a leader in our program, and we're glad to have him here with us. Let's take a look, learn a little bit more about Tim Allen. My name is Tim Allen. I'm from Albany, Georgia. I'm a sports management major. I'm a middle linebacker, wearing number 17. Uh, I came apart being a Benedict Tiger, I say by God, honestly. Uh, I had about 18, 19 offers coming out of high school and Benedict it was my last offer. I had no intention on coming at first, but after a visit and seeing the campus and seeing the city of Columbia, I kind of felt at home. I felt like this place was for me, so I felt like I could build my career here and that's what I've done so far. First off, the first two wins early on, they showed us that we got some fight and nobody you know, want to mess with us in the long run. Dropping those two games back to back these past couple weeks, we not gonna lay down and we ready for whatever. When that versus the strike, we won't lay down. Uh, some personal goals, uh, honestly, I wanna be a winner. Uh, being a winner, I mean, I wanna have that ring on my finger. I wanna be able to say I was a part of the first Benedict te College team to win a SIAC championship. That's like one of the biggest goals I have personally as myself. Uh, outside of all personal accolades, I'm more focused on the team because I wanna be a team player, I wanna be a winner. And our total goal, my main goal is to become that champion, the SIAC champion that we worked so hard for since uh, February of 2020 when Coach Barry got here.
Chemistry here, uh, speaking on the defense side of the ball, uh, we're very tight knit. Uh, we hold everybody accountable. Uh, even guys see me, uh, see anybody, a leader off or anybody off. At a, uh, a young guy may say, pick it up. So I feel like that's going to be good in the future years because uh, everybody here, we're not like leaders say something, everybody be quiet. Everybody on, on the defensive side pretty much uh, step up when they need to be. Also, just a whole chemistry. I feel like this team, we all have the main thing, the main goal in mind. We all want that ring. So we all working towards that and so that we all buying in. I feel like we everybody's bought in. Just how walk around camp and just hearing go tigers uh, that's the first time we heard that and that's like that chemistry right there it's like we all understand that when you say go tiger you have to mean it have i ever been a, a part of a program like Benedict college today uh no i haven't uh but coach barry like to uh, call it as we are a d1 right now and i feel like i'm a d1 uh, even from the discipline all the way to just uh the nice gear and stuff we have now it's like everything's is up now, everything is moving in the right direction. So I feel like this program is moving in ways that uh, a lot of people don't see. They don't see behind the behind the scene action, the long meeting hours, the workouts, all that just shows that this program is different and moving to a better direction. Since Cole Berry got here in February of 2020, the, the main thing he has changed or implemented is discipline. Discipline is something we harp off of and something we feed off of, something that's who we are. Uh, honestly, uh, Speaking back to earlier, you asked me about the two losses. Our two losses came from discipline. So we are working our way back, getting back more towards discipline. Because Coach Barry himself, he prides himself on discipline, which means eliminates the, dis uh, the penalties, uh, eliminate the self-inflicting neg negatives. Uh, focus on the small things. Like we all wear white socks. Focus on the small things that always turn out to be big. Uh, we have a saying right here, small but big. Something that other people may seem as small. It's small to us, but those small things can get you beat. What it means to me to have one and no mindset every week basically means winning each day. Winning each each classroom, starting in the classroom, each meeting room, each workout, each practice, it means being getting one percent better. If you don't get one percent better every day and everything you do, there's no way you can be one and no. All the small things we do from the classroom meetings to workouts to practices, it all leads up and they're gonna show on Saturdays. So one and no basically it don't start on Saturday, it starts on Sunday when we have our first team meeting. This year I was elected 2021-2022 uh, 20, 20, Mr. Senior of Benedict College. Uh, winning that felt amazing because I always felt like I could never do it on college level. I did it in high school and since playing football I kind of shied away from it. All my focus has been in classroom and in books. But with this being my senior, I like, why not hold back? Can't hold back anything. So I ran for the position. Uh, I had a lot of next I wasn't going to get it just because I was a football player or whatever. I wasn't dedicated to it. Uh, however, I have shown and proved to everyone that I am the perfect guy for Mr. Senior. Uh, some of my duties include uh, ceremonial events, uh, attending for the college. Uh, let's say we get called uh, a company wants Benedict College uh, present. Uh, myself and Miss Senior and the whole Royal Court will be present to uh, represent Benedict College. Now, I also uh, like this position because this position gives me another aspect outside of the field. It gives me something to do when I'm not uh, a tackling someone or tackling the books or in the classroom. It gives me an aspect where I can connect with people I won't normally connect with on a daily basis. I'm Tim Allen. Go Tigers! People have the power to make a lasting impact through acts of kindness, compassion, and strength. They inspire us to innovate and educate, to do more than we ever thought possible, to help you be your healthiest you. Prisma Health, inspired by you. And welcome back to the Tennisberry Coaches Show, brought to you by New Creation Construction. Coach, get to come back home after these two tough road games. What's it mean to come back home? Home sweet home. You know, Can't wait. Absolutely. Right now we're undefeated at home, and we want each and every one of our fans to come out and support. Just understand, we're going to get it rolling. 
believe in the process. Uh, our guys are excited about getting back home and playing in front of our awesome crowd, playing in front of our 12th man, the BCBOD. We're super excited about having a, a packed house uh, versus Fort Valley State this upcoming weekend, 2 o'clock kickoff. And we certainly want all our fans there. That's a 2 p.m. kickoff against Fort Valley State this Saturday in Charlie W. Johnson Stadium. We need all our fans there. You can get tickets at the Benedict uh, Athletic Office on Laurel Street or BenedictTigers.com or Benedict EDU. We need to have all our fans there. Absolutely, we do. So, Coach, what about Fort Valley State? They just come off a big win against Allen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good football team. Uh, Well-coached football team. They're, they're sound on the offensive side of the ball. They do a good job of having good balance and run and pass uh, and screens. They do a good job of getting the ball in their playmakers' hands. And on defense, they're sound. They get out there. Uh, those guys are are well, well coached, they, they fly around, and they're good at what they do. So it'll be an amazing challenge for us uh, versus Fort Valley State. But our guys will be ready for the, for the challenge, and they can't wait to get home and play in front of our fans. What kind of challenges do they face? As, since we've been, the last two weeks, been facing a lot of run-oriented teams, what kind of balance? You said they're a balanced team. Yeah, balance meaning they're good at running the ball and passing the football. You know, they, they do a good job, so our defense has got to have a good uh, plan of attack to be able to stop the run as well as defend the pass because they got some really good playmakers on the edge that can make some plays. Certainly, you know, Benedict, certainly before your time, last time we played Fort Valley 2019, that was a rough game, 50 to 16. Mm -hmm. So so we have a little payback maybe for them. Hey Amen. We'll be ready to go. Our guys will be locked in and coaches are doing a great job and getting game plans together and our guys will be ready to go this great. Saturday. Well, we need you, all our fans there, Saturday, 2 p.m., Charlie W. Johnson Stadium against Fort Valley State. So, Coach, been great here filling in this week, but we can't wait to have our voice of the Tigers, Curtis Wilson, back. We miss you, Curtis. We certainly do, Curtis. Get well. <laughs> Go Tigers. Go Tigers. We want to say thank you to our sponsors of the Chennis Berry Show, New Creation Construction, Prisma Health, Department of Health and Environmental Control, Lexington Medical Center, Advantage Sport and Fitness. Thank you for supporting Benedict College Athletics.